Good morning, Raymond Temple. Today is Tuesday, April 12, 2022. Here are your Tricky Tuesday Challenge. <coughs> Riddle number two, a walk in the woods. How far can a bear walk into the woods? I'll give you 20 seconds to think. Ready for the answer? Halfway. A bear can only walk into the woods until he reaches the halfway point. After that, he is walking out of the woods. Did you get it? Here are your current events. Um, it's National Grilled Cheese Day Sandwich Day. The cheesiest way to get to someone's heart is, you guess it, the adorably delicious grilled cheese sandwich. Here's a short history and some numbers. <laughs> One of the early, earliest references to melted cheese sandwiches is referred in a cookbook from 1902. A guy named Oto designed a bread slicing machine in 1923. The 1993 movie Benny and June mm -hmm. featured featuring Johnny Depp as a character Sam who prepared a stack of grilled cheese sandwiches using a clothes iron. <laughs> yeah. It's a movie, so don't try and do this at home. In 2006, Joey Chestnut set a world record by devouring 46 grilled cheese sandwiches in 10 minutes. 10 minutes? <laughs> wow! That's like as fast as my sister does. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a cheesy graph showing the grilled cheese popularity. Uh, scavenger hunt is scheduled for April 21st. The early bird special is 75 PBIS points from now on until tomorrow. Um, April 13th, beginning Wednesday, April 14th, the event will be 100 PBIS points. Remember to store in and outside of your class so you um, are allowed to participate in a scavenger hunt. Here's Dr. Salas with the words matter, with the words of matter. That's good enough. Good I have let in our special guest for today. I wanted to remind all of you of our campaign regarding Words Matter. What I wanted to share today is a reminder. I want everyone to think about March 13th, 2020. It was actually Friday the 13th. Do you remember what happened? Oh, yeah. Well, COVID started and had a... COVID quarantine. started and we had to quarantine. I want you to remember how sad and how hard it was for us not to be together in the same space. For us not to be able to be here at this school. I want you to remember how lonely and sad it felt for many of us. And here we are two years later, and we are just beginning to be able to come together again as human beings at school, in person, without masks. And so don't take that for granted. Let's remember the lesson that we learned how much we need each other, how important it is for us to be able to interact and talk and smile. Don't forget that. Each time you are saying something mean to a person, you are not appreciating 
the chance that we get to once again be together. Your words matter. Remember when we missed being able to say words to each other in person. And now for our special guest. Welcome to the Faces of Raymond Temple. Today we have Miss <laughs> Yes. Um, let's start with some getting to know you questions. What room number are you in and which grade do you teach? I am in room two and I teach kindergarten and can I just say that I had both of these students oh. in kindergarten. Oh. <laughs> she was one of my favorite teachers. Oh. <laughs> Have you always taught this grade? No, I've actually taught second grade and first grade and kinder and TK and a couple of combos here and there along the way. <laughs> what do you love about teaching at Rick I love the people, the staff, the sense of community, um, how we're inclusive. Yeah, it's a great school. Um, what hobbies do you enjoy? What hobbies? Um, I enjoy spending time with my family. I like to bake. And um, I enjoy going to see plays and musicals, Broadway shows. Will you share two personal facts or a memorable moment in your life? Um, I have a son. He is 15. I've been married for 20, it's going on 25 years. Wow. Wait, 24 years this year. Yeah, I hope my husband doesn't he watch He might this. be watching. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I have a dog and um, something memorable. Um, um, one memory that I have is a trip with my family to New York. Um, and we got to see a Broadway show. I have wanted to go to see a Broadway show for many, many years. I wanted to go to New York for many years. And um, we were able to go about five years ago. We saw a Broadway show. Um, and we had third row seats. It was amazing. We saw a two-time Tony winner. It was great. Um, before we conclude, is there anything you'd like to say to your class? I uh, just said I love them. And I want them to know that they can do anything that they set their mind to. Just need to work hard. And I know the year is coming to a close. I will miss each and every one of you. And just come say hi whenever you see me. Um, but you will always be a part of, of me. You left like there's a... Being a Broadway, there's a song that says leaving a handprint on your heart. That's how I feel. Each child leaves a handprint on my heart. Thank you for your time, Ms. Needle. We appreciate you and all you do. Thank you. Curious um, minds want to know, hmm, let's play the video and find out. So why did I decide to do this video? Well, let's be honest. The possibility of working with Rodney Mullen came up. I can't believe I'm even saying that. <laughs> And so I googled some videos of Rodney Mullen and then I watched video after video after video and I realized I have so many questions. How does he do that? Honestly, like from a physics standpoint, let's just start with how do you get the skateboard off the ground, which initially sounds like a simple question. So through this unrelenting inquisitive brain, I became so interested in skateboarding. What? And fortunately, Rodney Mullen is the kind of guy who also loves to think about science and physics. And he agreed to meet me for this video and to let me just direct him on whatever tricks I wanted to analyze. And I brought along a couple friends who happen to really know how to use high speed cameras. <laughs> By the way, I'm Diana and you're watching Physics Girl. And this video is about why skateboarding is an incredibly rich combination of fundamental physics with really difficult mechanics and is a beautiful example of physics in action. Okay, so despite the fact that I surf and I snowboard, I do not skate. So let's head back to the studio where we can look at what we filmed with Rodney. 
Well, one's really straightforward. We did a bunch of 360s. Yeah. And so that's conservation of angular momentum. So you're coming out wide. And what happens on that, because it's a nose wheelie, that one is one where you can't pull in your arms too fast because you spin right out of control. Can confirm. It's amazing to me how much of Rodney's use of physics is so inherent in his comfort with the skateboard. So you know how that works, like as long as you keep the big radius and your velocity will stay kind of mellow until friction will dissipate the energy. So you can gradually pull them in and keep your velocity kind of sort of constant. But if you yank them in, then your velocity increases like crazy and you'll be unstable and you throw yourself out. And I would have ended up in the lights, you know. I don't know about you, but it seems to me like I could have just allowed Rodney to keep teaching us the physics of skateboarding. But I had too many burning questions. So here are the things that brought out my deepest curiosity. When I first started looking at skate tricks, I noticed that most of the tricks are some combination of the skateboard flipping or rotating about its three major axes. Oh, first of all, I think it's gonna be really useful for us to talk about the skateboard as having three different axes. Bear with me, I promise I won't call them X, Y, and Z. Let's call them the long axis, the mid axis, and the perpendicular axis. The reason it's tricky to flip about the mid axis is not just a hard trick. It's a thing, it's a mathematical thing, known as the intermediate axis theorem. Get this, it's the same exact reason that this T-handle spinning in the space station spontaneously flips around over and over. The intermediate axis theorem will affect a tennis racket, a book, anything where the object has three different obvious axes and the moment of inertia is different for all three. What I mean by that is that the oomph that you need to spin it about each of the individual axes is different for all three of them. The axis with the middle level of oomph needed to get it to spin in the case of the phone is that mid axis, known more generally as the intermediate axis. The reason why the mid axis is so hard to spin involves a lot of complicated math that all works out to define the intermediate axis theorem, which states that inherently, spin about the intermediate axis in an object like this is always unstable. So there it is. That's why flipping it is so hard. I asked if there was a trick where the skateboard spins about the intermediate axis, and I was told that there was, and it's called the impossible. Watch Rodney's Only Impossible. His foot actually guides the board to make sure that it keeps spinning about just that axis. When I was asking him, like, is there a trick like that? And uh. he was like, yeah, there is. But you follow it with your, with your foot, and I was like, Interesting. And if he lets it go, well, physics says that it will probably become unstable. In fact, he did another trick where it starts out spinning like an impossible, but look what happens as soon as he lets it go. Almost immediately, it started spinning with much more complicated motion because it became unstable. Because to me, this one without the foot seems like it would be impossible because of the intermediate axis there. The reason that skateboarders have to keep their foot on the board to guide an impossible is partially to overcome the intermediate axis theorem. It's the same reason that the teething in space starts spontaneously flipping. That connection is so cool to me. The tricks and the physics that Rodney likes to talk about are super advanced, but I'm still over here like, how do you even get the board off the ground? So that's the last question that I've got here. Rodney alluded a little bit to being able to kind of drag the board up with your foot, but that's once the board is already in the air. Skateboards aren't pogo sticks. What I mean by that is they don't have springs in them. Trust me, I asked the experts during my deepest moments of ignorance. But the board is every seesaw you've ever ridden. It's got lever action all over the place. Look closely for clues at how Rodney gets off the ground. It's there. His foot is pushing down on the board past the wheel, which seesaws the other side up. Then it hits the ground hard and that pushes the board up in the air. Consequently, the earth was pushed down because of Newton's third law of equal forces, but the earth forgave Rodney for that. It's just beautiful physics. And then the art comes in, you know, controlling the board. For lunch today, we're having chicken tamales with green sauce. Unfortunately, no grilled cheese. Ah! While we're on the subject of lunch, uh, there will be no flipping of any drink items, cartons, and food. This includes milk, orange juice, water bottles, and so on. Please be responsible and keep your lunch area clean. Pick up and throw away any trash. Um, stay tuned for your sign words after the lunch. Remember to store them every day, everywhere, with everyone. That's it from your Temple Student Council. Bye! Bye!
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with justice for all. Thank mm -hmm. you.